let's review sort of what we've gone over so far. We've talked a bit about server-side scripting. Even though we didn't write any server-side scripting, we talked about it. The idea of server-side scripting is that unlike plain old HTML, which is the same for everyone, it doesn't change unless you go in and manually change the web page. With server-side scripting, you have a script. And the script is a little program. You can almost think of it as a recipe to make a web page. All right? I, I often use the analogy that plain old HTML pages are like going to McDonald's, right? You go to McDonald's, you order a Big Mac, they just turn around and give you the next Big Mac that's in the bin. They don't make it especially for you. Whereas if you go, say, to Subway, Subway you go and you can tell them what kind of bread you want, what kind of uh, sandwich you want, what kind of vegetables you want on it, what kind of toppings you want on it, do you want it baked or not, what kind of cheese, and so on. So you can give the person that's making it for you, you can give them some input. And they can customize what they're making specifically to you as opposed to simply giving you something that's made that's generic for, for anyone. So plain old HTML pages, unless someone manually goes in and changes the page, is going to be the same for every person that requests them. Whereas dynamic pages, pages that are created via server-side scripting, can take into account and can be customized for people that, uh, uh, based on any number of factors. We talked a bit about some of the factors. For example, geographic location. When a user requests something, they give enough information to the server so the server knows approximately where they're located. So if we do a search on restaurants or whatever, we're going to get restaurants in the Illyria area. All right. The other thing, though, another common way that the client can give information to the server about what they want is via a form. And a form provides, when that request is made, there's a bunch of information that's sent, including the IP address, which the server can use to determine the location. But in, a, in addition to that, there's a form input. So we went over this example last time, where we wrote a HTML form that's submitted to Bing search engine, and we get the results. So we go and view this page, enter the search words. We search for Cleveland Brown, seems appropriate for today, and click Submit. We get sent, and our search is for Cleveland Browns. And we can see, oh, look, they're in first place. Isn't that, isn't that wonderful? First time since 1994, yeah. Yeah, I was, I was just going to say, my, my, my younger daughter would have been, no, my older daughter would have been one year old at that point. My younger daughter uh, wasn't even born yet at that point. So, wow, it's been a while. All right? And, and to give you some perspective, and if you're quick at math, you can figure out how old I am, but the last time the Browns won the NFL title, I was four years old. So, that's going back uh, a ways. All right. So we can give information to the server, and the server then can use that information to customize its response back to us. We make a request, and we give some additional information. Just like if you go to Subway, you can order a turkey club. All right, You can make a request for a sandwich. But then you give some extra information, like I want provolone cheese, and I want mayonnaise on it, and I don't want any onions, but I do want lettuce and tomatoes, or whatever. The form is a way that you can do that with a web page. Now, that was sort of the basics. And let's go and review back the basics. The, the main thing I was trying to get a whole, uh, uh, across last time was the purpose for forms to provide information and the basic mechanism by which they act. So if we look here, we will see 
The form tag wraps around everything that gets sent to the server. Now, in our case, we only have a couple things, a button and the text, text box. But if we had more things and we sent them all as a package to the server, they'd be in there too. The form, has, the form tag itself has two attributes. It has a method attribute, which is either get or post. The difference between that is with the get method, we will see the data being sent to the server in the query string. So for example, I do a search here. Notice up on the query string we see Q equals Cleveland Browns. The action is the name of the script that we're going to be calling. So in this case, the action is the name of the script that we're calling. So we call that script and we pass this additional information. So those are two attributes that are needed on the form tag for the form to work correctly. Inside the form, I have two of the different kinds of form controls. A text box, which is sort of a basic control, is accomplished via the input tag. Type equals text. I give it a name. And that name needs to match what the name the server is expecting for that piece of data. So in this case, the server is expecting the name to be Q. All right? And therefore, I have to give it that name. I then give it an ID because it's the ID that I can link the label to the form control. All right? The label here says enter search words, and it's a label for QID, and sure enough, this text box has a, uh, an ID of QID. We do that because for people that can see, it's obvious that this label goes with this text box. But if a screen reader is narrating the screen to them, and especially if there were a bunch of form fields and there's a bunch of other stuff on the page, it wouldn't necessarily be obvious that that belongs to that text box. So we use that label tag to sort of link those two together so that the screen reader has a better chance of understanding what goes with what. Finally, we have the submit button. The submit button is the equivalent of Captain Jean-Luc Picard saying, make it so. All right, go and do this search. Go and send this data to the server. So the type equals submit. All right, that means send it to the server. And the server then can process it, and as we saw, can get the search results. So this is the basics of a form, and this is a basic mechanism by which a form can send data to a server to be processed. In our second example today, we're going to look at um, other form controls other than the text box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some other form controls on a form even though I don't have a server-side script to process it. So I'm going to go and I'm going to save this as form 2. And I'm going to um, I'm going to eliminate the action. If you eliminate the action, the page sends the sends the uh, um, sends the data back to itself, which is sometimes done. So I'm going to make a form where maybe we could enter in information about a prospective student. All right? So there could be a text box for the first name. and a text box for the last name. All 
I'm going to go and create the labels for these. Notice that many form elements will have both a, uh, uh, a name and an ID. And they're both needed because they serve different purposes. And we'll, we'll see an example of the different purposes they portray when we look at, when we look at like a radio button. Now, when we look at this, in addition to looking at these other form controls that we're going to be looking at in a minute, we're also going to look at styling a form, how to make a form look good. So here I'm going to start out with just two text boxes, a and two labels and a submit button. So I go and save this. If we bring it up, we get those strung out like that. Now we can easily see if we start to add extra stuff in here, like, you know, um, are they, um, you know, um, what, what year they're in, of, of, are they, uh, you know, a, a, in their first year, second year, third year, fourth year, or something like that, uh, of school, or what their major is, or other things like that. If we simply strung these things in a line, that would make the form very hard to read, all right? Input tags are inline tags, which means that they're going to string along in a line. Really, if you think of a form, what a form really is, is a list of items that we are going to send to the server. And therefore, I'm going to use a list tag to put all my form stuff together. So, I'll go in and create my unordered list. And then each piece of this form is going to be a list item. Now, it may not look pretty at first, but we'll do something to make the styling look better. All right, so I have my form with first name and last name, and I have the submit button, and each one of those is a list item. So I look at it now, and well, it's starting to shape up a little bit more, looking like a nice form. Now, a few things I don't like about, right? I don't like the fact that there's the bullet points in front of it. That really doesn't make sense. And... I might want extra space between them because they're kind of crammed a little close together and other things like that. All those things we're going to accomplish via our CSS. So I'm going to make a CSS file in a minute here and we'll start styling this to look the way that we want to. So let me go in and make a CSS file. And I'll go in and I'll say form UL 
list style type none. Form, form, li, margin, bottom, five pixels. So, what does this style rule say? Form ul says ul's within the form tag. So that's a selector. So if I have other ul tags on the page, this selector is irrelevant for it. This is only relevant for the ULs within the form tag. And I'm saying list style type, that is, do I want a bullet point or something else? I'm saying none. So I don't want any thing next to it. So I'm going to get rid of the, the, the bullet points. The other thing I'm going to do is for form LI, I'm going to put a margin underneath each LI of five pixels. So let's go and let's save this. And bring it in. And we'll see how it has changed the appearance of this page. Link type equals. That should be right. And let's look at this again. All right. And so now we're starting to look a lot more like a form. Now let's put in another one for phone number. All right. So I'm just going to copy this. Didn't want to cut it, but that's okay. Label for phone, phone number, type equals text, name equals phone, ID equals phone ID. Now if we look at this, we'll notice that now this is starting to look a little sloppy. All right. First name and last name we didn't notice because they're both around the same length. But phone number is a longer label. So we can, um, we're starting to get where that's not going to be nicely lined up. All right. Fortunately, we can take care of that with a couple things in our style sheet. As soon as you hear, I don't like the way that that looks, that should spark in your brain that I want to make a change to the CSS. I'm not saying I want different form fields up there. I want different content. I'm saying I don't like the way it's laid out. I don't like the way it's looked. It looks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to specify label tags to have a width of 100 pixels. That did not do anything. Even though I saved it. Why did that not do anything? That did not do anything because a label tag, as I said before, is an inline tag. And certain properties in the box model only apply to block tags. So how do we fix that? Well, we say that our label, we want to treat 
as an inline block tag. Essentially, that means that we want to treat it like an inline tag, but we want it to have some of the attributes that are only available on block tags. And now when we do it, notice that it pushed that out so our text boxes are in nice alignment. Now, I could make this probably look a little better by saying, hmm, what if I go and I make the text align of the label be right? Then I have a nice little margin for this and a margin for that. And I think that's a good way to do a form. Now, I don't like the submit button there. So what I'm going to do is I want to center that submit button. But just that submit button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an ID on this li and I'm going to put a style in just for that ID. Now, I'm going to do it wrong at first, all right? And then I'm going to do it right. So leave some space if you're taking notes on this, because I'm going to say text align center. So we're going to leave some space after that, because there's more stuff I have to put there to make this to work. So I go and save that, and... doesn't work. Did I save it? Yeah, I saved it. Doesn't work. Any idea why that didn't work? I must have known that it wasn't going to work, so I did it on purpose. I said that intentionally because it's a Monday morning, and if I didn't say that intentionally, you'd say he's losing it. All right. It didn't work because, well, let, let me back up and rephrase it. It did work. It just didn't work the way that we expected. All right? Hmm. Let me go and let me put a border around that. Now it's not working in a way I didn't expect that. Text line center, border 1px, submit button. Ah. I stand corrected. Actually, it is Monday, and I am losing it. All right, that's how it looks. There you go. Now, that isn't the way that I would want it to look. I'd want it to be closer over here. So what I could do, remember, an LI being a block tag goes, extends all the way across the page. So therefore, what I could do is do a text align left and maybe give it a left margin and say margin left one hundred pixels. 
And what that would do then is that would bring it in to be aligned with the other stuff. Maybe if I want to put a little more distance between that and the other form controls, I could go in and say margin top 15 pixels. All right, so eventually we got it the way that I wanted it. Oops. All right, eventually we got it the way that I wanted it. Okay, so let's look at some of the other um, form controls that we could use. All right, next one we're going to use is a radio button. So I'm going to go and Actually, no, I don't want to do that. We'll come back to the label in a second. Now, notice something about this. I've given each of these the same name. And that is not a mistake. The fact that they have the same name, in this case year, is what makes this a radio button and makes it work so that if I click on one, it unclicks the other. So, if I go and look at this, oops, I'll see my four buttons. Now, there's no label on them yet because I said I was going to hold off the label for a second. But notice that they work as a group. So, I cannot possibly click more than one. If I click one, the others click off. I do that because I've given them all the same name. If I were to, to give, let's say, the last one a different name, then I'd be able to click one of these and that one at the same time. You don't want to do that. The idea of a radio button is that you can only select one field. So the way that you tell the browser that these radio buttons are to be treated as a group that is, only one can be selected is by giving them the same name. Now here's a case where we're going to give them different IDs though, because we want our labels to correspond to each individual radio button. So, I'm going to go in and create labels for my four radio buttons. And I'm going to give each one of them their own ID. So, the first label, I'll say label 
label for freshman ID. Second one, I'll give an ID of sophomore ID. The third one, junior ID. And the fourth one, senior ID. So in a nutshell, the names can be the same because the names for a radio button is what ties the radio buttons together. But the IDs, just like IDs always are, are going to be unique. They need to point to one thing and one thing specifically. So now we have this and we have our freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior radio buttons. Questions so far about this? We have a handful of other form controls that we're going to go over. The next one is a drop-down list. And a drop-down list is different than a radio button in that a drop-down list doesn't take up space until you click on it. Then it expands and shows all the choices. Where radio buttons, the choices are out there. Oftentimes, you use a radio button when there's less choices and a drop down when there's more. But you could use either in either case. It's just a matter of how the form is going to look. So let me go in and let me make a drop down for major. You know, what the student is planning on majoring in. Now I'm going to assume in this case that a student only has one major. We actually can make a drop down allow you to select more than one value, but we're not going to do that today. Typically with a drop down they select only one. Now, the drop-down is a form tag that doesn't use the input tag. It uses something else. And that something else is a combination of a select tag and an option tag, or actually multiple option tag. The select tag says, hey, we have a drop down here. <coughs> it's going to be for the person's major. There will be one option tag for each of the options that the user can pick. And I'm just going to put a couple of them in here, but you know that really, if you're going to do a, a real drop down for here for LC, there'd be a lot of majors, because there are dozens of majors, dozens of things that you can major in.
So I have four option tags here. That means my drop down is going to have four options on it. I have four option tags. That means that there's going to be a list of four things in this drop down. They're all grouped together and they're all called major. So if I select this, it gets saved under the name or it gets sent under the name of major. And I made uh, some bonehead mistake. Let's see. Well, I made a mistake somewhere in here. I can't tell where that mistake is. I can do two things. I can stare at this and hope that it jumps out at me. Or I can run it through the validator. So I'm going to go and I'm going to run to w3c.org. And I'm going to run my page through the HTML5 validator. tells me that it has 14 errors. No space between attributes. Ah, wow, this is good. <laughs> Anyone see my error? I have to confess that in this case, the validator doesn't give me much information. It just complains about every single one of my things. Interestingly enough, the problem is I forgot a quote here. I didn't notice that either until I ran it through the validator. The validator really was confusing what it was telling me. One thing to keep in mind, when your page doesn't work, it's not necessarily, you can't necessarily tell the problem right where the page stops working. Sometimes it's a little bit before. So now if I go and save this, notice I'm not seeing that label. Why? Because that label tag was messed up. Now I go, and there we go. There we have our drop down. Yay. And as I click on it, I have a list of the ones that the student could be taking. All right. There is. a password control like if you allowed the, the student to pick their own password And it's 
Instead of type equals text, it's type equals password. And the difference there is, as I type in this, I, it's not echoed back. So someone standing over my shoulder won't be able to see what is typing in there. All right, there are a handful of others. Let's see if we can get through all of them today. There is a checkbox. A checkbox is for a yes or no question. So for example, if we wanted to see if the student has attended orientation, type is checkbox. And we get a little checkbox that they can check for either yes or no. All right. Last one is a text area. A text area is different than a text box in that it is multiple rows. So something like first name, last name, that would be a text box because typically that would be just a one-liner. If you wanted to give the user a place to put comments in, you would use a text area because that will allow multiple rows. So there the comment field is a freeform box that you can have that. And you can expand the size if you want to. Um, these are the basic form controls. Now, next time, what are we going to do? We're going to do a couple things. We're going to talk about a couple other form controls that we haven't talked about yet that are not really used that often, but we, you should be aware of them. There's one in particular that I would argue you should almost never use, and we'll talk about that one. We'll also talk about some controls that are available specifically in HTML5 to make your life easier. All right, These, the controls that I've talked about today, uh, are all been in HTML for a long time. But there are some brand new controls in HTML5 that um, can help you out um, in doing certain things, a control for a date, for example, where you can choose a date from a calendar. All right, we'll finish forms up on Wednesday. We'll probably also looking at some more styling and formatting issues. All right, any questions? I would hope to have your um, designs graded within the next day or two, so if you're, um, you know, to provide you some feedback with that. All right. Okay in Ridgeville? All right. All right. We'll see you on Wednesday.